the last time the smell your finger thing the test <laughs> you know right? you talking like, about smoking or <laughs> <laughs> okay it applies I to know, smoking too <laughs> <laughs> what are young punks doing in the toilet <laughs> <laughs> wow. they all laugh then I can all finish the thing <laughs> this is your daily catch yeah that one yeah <laughs> boom Today's episode is brought to you by the Health Promotion Board. So in recent months, right, uh, various vices have come into the spotlight, uh, like uh, ranging from drug and alcohol abuse to the rise of vaping. So it's really got me thinking about uh, addiction that I think I might have. And this is really something that I've noticed. Uh, Since 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think... Might. Okay, uh, so just to put it out there, I... I think I might have an alcohol addiction. You do. It's already out there. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't need to put, you don't need to put. You're not sure what's inside this cup. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll be the first one to admit that I like a drink. <laughs> and that might be an understatement. But when I drink, right, I have realised that I need to get Pass completely up. wasted. <laughs> Pretty much. La. Like, I yeah. think the first time we, we went on a company trip, because like, Jared basically like was here and then wasn't here and then was here again, right? And then we went to Taiwan. As in, he blacks out. <laughs> and then he comes back. And then he blacks <laughs> out again and then he comes back. Also true. <laughs> so we went for like a company trip to Taiwan, right? And then when finally we had alcohol, I think we finally went out to a club or to a bar, right? He just non-stop, right? Wasn't like, he was always drinking. To the point where I think like within half an hour, we're all like a very good high, right? This guy was already like flailing already. I think like as much as we are joking about Jared's like alcohol story, right? I mean, it's because we are friends mm -hmm. and it's not that we take it lightly or what. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We support yeah. you. Yeah, we support oh, him. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Even though that after a wedding, he was locked in the bathroom for four hours. What? We support you. Who locked him inside? So we went for a friend's wedding, right? And then... uh. Obviously, the first thing I do is like double fist wine. <laughs> the first wine, thing uh. you do? No, even yeah. before the first course, he was it, buzzed really. It really is. Yeah, so I double fist like wine and then... Uh, and then all the 20 other tables are wondering why there's no more alcohol. <laughs> I blacked out and then I think they... To their credit, they tried to get me out but then I told them to go. And then I woke up, right? And then because it was a wedding lunch, when, I, when I left the toilet, the, the next thing. wedding had already started. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the... Round yeah. two. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's so bad, right? That like when Ned and I are discussing like alcohol for our wedding, right? We were thinking like how much is enough? And then we go, there's gonna be people that doesn't drink. Then I go, but there's Jared. <laughs> <laughs> it's really drinking to the point of like Forget yeah, I really don't remember anything until the next day. La. But I feel <laughs> I feel like when I was 18, 19, I was also like that. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm 32 <laughs> now. Oh, oh, I thought you been way back. Okay, so I felt like <laughs> I never really had a problem until HPB contacted us. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, no. <laughs> Reflection. Until last December. Uh. So my set amount, right, is to drink once a week. That's kind of my... <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. But when I didn't have a job, right, I found myself like drinking two times a week. And then after that, it became... Four times a week. And how does your wife feel about it? She's not very happy about it. <laughs> like, did she mention honest. anything or you just sent? She, we had a talk about it. La. I mean, in the interest of full open communication, she said like, yeah, I think you are really drinking a bit too much. La. Yeah. I think I identified why I drink okay. during that period where I was drinking a lot. It's because I had all these like uncertainties in my head, right? Problems with life, that kind of thing. And then what I told my wife, la, which is actually quite sad, la, is that I just don't want to think of all these thoughts for a while. Mm. So I'm just going to blank out. And right. the only way I can blank out is to get shit face drunk. Right, right, right. I can say now that once I have returned to employment, right, like uh, the drinking has kind of improved. La. But I think- You're the, a recovering. I am a recovering <laughs> alcoholic, thanks to employment. But the thing is that I know what it's like to have that kind of like four days a week kind of drinking. And I- Benders. Uh. I liked it in a way. <laughs> Yeah. And then nowadays, okay, it's back to one. But I can feel that that want yeah. to like, okay, you drank on Friday. Yeah. Why not one more on Saturday? If there's any point in time where I knew that I was reaching levels of alcoholism if I hadn't already, right? Then that was it. Lah. Yeah. And I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that. And maybe if you guys have any addictions of your own. Okay. So like, I feel like back in the day, because my parents, all these don't, nobody around me really drinks. So I've never liked the taste of alcohol. But most of my friends were, once we all hit the age of 18, they were looking for part-time jobs. And a lot of them became bartenders. So that 
ended up becoming where I spent most of my time. In fact, I also became a bartender for a short period of time, right? Oh, wow. Um, that whole period was me going to visit my friends and hang out because he's working. And then the drinks are okay, uh, free. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the drinks are free. And he actually started to teach me how to drink. Okay. Then suddenly, after a while, I start to like, eh, actually beer tastes quite good. Uh. Then after that, then we start to move on to the hard liquor and everything else, right? And then before I knew it, every day, uh, I was at a bar drinking like mm. from 5 p.m. And then after we hit like maybe he clocks off at like 11 to 1 a.m. We would just grab drinks, go to, you know, the bridge at Boki. Yeah. We would sit there and just continue <laughs> drinking until like the next morning, kind of going make friends. And then every night was like that. It was super unhealthy. So that became a cycle for me. And at that point, I didn't know that there was a problem yet. It was just to me, this is what I do, Lord. I'm young. There's nothing else to do. So I'm just going to do this with my friends all the way, right? And then one day, I, I went to a bar with my friends. And then I asked myself, can I just not order alcohol? And then I realized that I couldn't. Ooh. Then that's when I realized, oh, f I think I have a problem. And the moment I identified with that, right, then I'm a bit extreme. So my immediate switch was, I'm not going to drink alcohol. Which I'm going to completely stop. Even when I go to bars, even when it's, yeah. And it worked for me for a very long period of time. But after a while, right, what I started to understand was that with regards to any addictions, like, right, be it smoking or whatever, you have to, Make sure that this substance or whatever it may be does not control you and that you can control it. And like you always feeling like you want you want it, but you cannot have it, right? I don't believe in that. I believe that as and when, if I want to have a beer or alcohol, I can. That it's it's never a, a hard no for me because mm -hmm. I don't think in life that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Moderation yeah. la. Is what Moderation, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. so interesting to hear because like in the times that I mean I've seen John Paul at like bars or clubs, right? Like the most he goes is like one one drink. Yeah. Because he knows yeah. that if he goes in <laughs> yeah, no, 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 feel like you have to. I wonder if all addiction is so much, how to say, like just a mind control, like self-conscious kind of thing. Because like, I think, as in, I am I would say I'm quite detached from like vices, like even like smoking, so that like, I don't smoke, I don't really drink or so. Then, mm. I mean like partially because of my skin, la, so it's like a happy, happy win. Mm. Then, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a great excuse because like, even when I go out with friends, right, it's like if, like friends push you the drink that kind, then I can say, oh, cannot, like my skin will flare up, la, my, my hand will tear, you know, then, right. yeah. so then it's like a, win-win situation for me, mm. I felt. But then, I think what I struggled with was like... Porn. <laughs> no, stress eating. All <laughs> oh, right. Oh, right, right. Oh, different different yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, eating. Yeah. Yeah, so then... <laughs> <laughs> Why? You can tell jokes, I cannot tell jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so, as in, because it's such an unconscious thing, it's almost like I'm just doing my work, right? And then after that, I just need something to stack on, like, or mm. like say, like, I'm cueing a video, like, or like giving comments on it. I got nothing to do with my hands, you know, that I can yeah. just like eat, no? So I don't realize that what I'm doing is because I am stressed or because like there is some like negative emotion tied to it, and then therefore I am eating yeah. to comfort myself in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. And then that I was thinking like, eh, but is there anything that I can do about this other than like, I just tell myself, oh, don't snack, oh. you know what I mean? Like I just be conscious enough to catch myself in that behavior mm. and then I just don't snack, ah, you know? Then especially in the office, like people around me all eating, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm sorry. So, sorry. sorry. Yeah. No, but it's something that I'm still struggling with. Yeah. So that I'm, that's why I'm wondering whether it's really just such a uh, be conscious about it, you know, to uh, overcome any addiction. Yeah. No, I, I think you bring up a great point because a lot of times we are talking about vices, like you opened up with us mentioning the main vices, right? Mm. But yeah. addiction is so much more than that, mm. right? It could be you addicted to retail therapy, for example, shopping. Mm. It could be you addicted to your social media. But these are things that are very hard to identify or notice uh, within yourself. But mm. a lot of the times they are like what, what we brought up earlier, right? They are as you avoiding something or it's an escape mechanism or it's you associate, associating it with like something Comfort. like a negative. Yeah. yeah. So, the, the ability to identify and be aware of it, that's, that's, that to me is one of the biggest challenges because a lot of time, right, when you say, say you are, you're addicted to, to, to drinking mm. and you try to curb that and you're fighting, you go cold turkey and all that kind of stuff, right? If you don't do it the right way, a lot of times how, what happens is that it manifests itself in another form, right. which might right. be another addiction. So instead of drinking, now it becomes eating, you know, or it, it bounces around. So you have to be careful to go the right way with, with, figuring out or navigating the addiction as well. Yeah, actually I had a friend who like um, quit smoking by cold turkey 
and then I think like a lot of advice, right, is that you got to keep your mouth busy because a lot of people smoke because like they, they realize that their mouth is not active. I right? know where your mind is going. Hold up. Do you have an addiction story of your own? Tell us how you beat your addiction in the comments below and we'll get back to the episode. <laughs> I'm watching a different channel now. Yes, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off today. So like, <laughs> back to the yeah. 9 o'clock news. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Good for them. Oh, right, right. <laughs> so what happened, I think with I thought I don't I don't even think it's just one of them. I think like two of them, right, was that they substituted it with snacks. Mm. So like whenever oh. they felt like smoking, they would just eat. And then it ended up that they started getting overweight because they would be eating so much to curb that smoking addiction. So I completely agree. Like, I think you gotta do it in a sustainable way. If not, you might channel it to something else that's bad. Also, I feel you. like okay, like alcohol and smoking seems to be like the toughest to quit. It's mm. quite hard. I think cause especially compared to like the other addictions, right? Like whether it's like work la, or for what there is a very specific like drug to it which is nicotine, which does mess with like the way your, your, your chemistry mm. and brain. Yeah, chemistry. the chemistry in your brain. Yeah. No, so on the point of smoking, like I also quit smoking. You also <laughs> <laughs> No, because like you know you young, right? Then okay, for me, right, how I got into smoking was because of peer pressure. Mm. Um and it was quite ugly. So in poly I had this group of friends and all of them like maybe a bit are being a same kind, right? So they all already smoke, right? Mad. So every time we, like your class break, right? We go up to level five toilet, then lock the door, then just smoke inside. Oh, I don't huh? smoke, but I will hang out with them, right? Yeah, yeah. So one of the friends is the guy that will go up to anybody that's not a smoker, and he'll be like, "Hey, just take her. You never smoked before. You try it. Just try. It. I give you. I give you. Why peace? It's like that, I know. Damn rub up. Then thankfully, I had another friend who would always be like, "Hey, you don't give John cigarettes. He don't wow. smoke. Yeah, don't." But then there was the one time that my dad friend not there. Oh no. <laughs> then, yeah, and this is like months in already. Then my- really angel there first. Yeah. Then <laughs> I feel like the guy's eye like, ding. <laughs> <laughs> the moment the door closed, right? Then he like, <laughs> then he took out the pack. He, you know, he must pack the- Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then he- But it's all right, mental. I don't know what this, that, that, this, that. Uh, very specific. And then, then I like, I okay, Lord, just try, law. <laughs> just try a few thousand dollars. Gonna throw his, yeah. Oh my God. Do that, just try. It's so- Expensive, by the way, smoking. But yeah, so I started there. But only in army, that was the worst. Because even in poly and all that, right, I was just like social smoking-ish. So it's not like you finish like one pack a day kind. But when mm. I got into army, right, wow, when you really nothing to do and the only thing there is is for everybody to go and f***ing smoke and talk cock, right? Yeah. Wow. That one then Rabux, yeah. That, that one, it got to a point where it was like one pack a day kind. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then it's so expensive. Then you 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 run out of money so badly that you have to end up going and buy the roll yourself, one. Yeah, Ang Hoon. Ooh. Uh, yeah, 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 the loose. The, uh, the struggle, loose. struggle secret. Oh, la. my God. Yeah, then like, it become a bit pathetic. Uh. Then after that, then I was like, okay, la. I'm a, bi- I'm a, I'm a bitch to this thing already. La. I better stop. And, and and I think a good thing was that I was, as I was finishing army, I knew I had to go back to like society. World, and like, yeah. <laughs> then I was like, do I really want to be the smoker? Right. Then I think like, yeah, no lah, never mind. Yeah. Then I, psh. No, it's crazy that like, you have such amazing self-control. Like both really, the alcohol and the smoking, right? Like you can just turn on. Yeah, do you have any withdrawal symptoms at all or anything? Because addiction usually comes with these kind of withdrawal symptoms, right? Yeah. I feel like I was very gradual with the way I quit. Even though I say it's like this, right? But, oh, it's but not actually like this. No, so, so like yeah. say army ends in three months time. And then I'm really thinking about this. Right. So I give myself that three months to cut down. Wow, to the, the point fight. where when it hits that three month mark, wow. I know that I can hit zero. Yeah. So it's a gradual process. And I think it's a lot healthier than if I were to go cold turkey. Not to say that some people cannot just stop. Yeah. But even within those three months and stop stopping, right, I do believe that it probably manifested in other ways. I just wasn't aware at that point. But, mm. but the whole point of this is really because like, I think peer pressure plays a very large mm. part, right? Mm. And your environment plays a very large part in you picking up some of these habits unknowingly or very very subconsciously. La. The worst is like, if you go for dinner and then like 90% of them smoke and like you have to be the only one there to like chop the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I feel like excess is one of the biggest problems. Like I've also had some food, like food issues, right? So the pro- the main problem right, is that if there is no unhealthy snacks and unhealthy uh, yeah, at home, yeah, yeah. then I'm much less inclined to yeah. consume. Out of sight, yeah. out of mind, is it? That kind yeah. of thing. No, but yeah. you see like when it comes to excess, like say vape, right? Especially the young kids these days. I have no idea where they get it from. But like on TikTok and all this, I see people like vaping. Yeah. And then in Singapore, like, I mean, it's clearly illegal. So where are all these people getting their vape from? I also have no idea. Yeah, I think really that's quite a relevant point to move on. Is that... Nice. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Good segue. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Let's let's segue. Is that from my experience, right? I don't see smokers so much anymore, actually. 
what I'm seeing oh. actually is a lot more people because they're all vaping. In box. Yeah, I walk around <laughs> my my void deck and all that kind of stuff. Right? I'm seeing like secondary school kids just vaping all around. Eh. I'm not saying that last time secondary school I never see. Yeah, they, they, they smoke also. Like smoking, yeah. like teenagers smoking, right? This, a lot less. It's not a new thing, right? Yeah. But this one is like, wow, like the whole gang is just walking and vaping and everything is all over the place. Eh. I, I think it's it's a lot more heavy of the use compared to cigarettes. Like, in, I think at, you know why. It's so much easier to hide. Yeah. You know how f***ing difficult it is to hide cigarettes? The smell. The smell. Yeah, the smell alone. But now also like, you just vape one time, right? Like, you... It's just like fruity, fruity flavor oh, already. They just dissipates. Then, then you just move on already. Very hard yeah, to catch, yeah. ma. And the devices all very, very small, small. and can hide in your pocket. Oh. No, it's especially that. Because like, say for example, you are underage or whatnot and you're at home. Like, if you really want to smoke, you either have to sneak out of the house ah. or you open or you your try window. to open window, <laughs> blow then, outside, yeah, then then spray the perfume. This one, right? You just <laughs> experience. Like, I, I'm assuming there's like absolutely no smell. So then like, you can just get away with it so easily. The, last time, the yeah. smell your finger thing, the test. <laughs> you know what? Are you talking like, about smoking or... <laughs> okay, it applies and to smoking I too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think another thing that might be a contributing reason is that yeah, like you were mentioning, there were there are flavors. Yeah, so right, like right, right. it's kind of very appealing for them to like oh this is sweet instead of like Coca Cola. Yeah, this like Coca Cola compared to like, like the taste of nicotine time, in your mouth. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> but I think like something that okay, I feel like it's a misconception that like in order to quit smoking that I choose to vape instead because it's less bad. No, I've heard that before, yeah. They right, right, right. They, they consider vape to be a less bad version of smoking though. I don't know how true it is because there's no data yeah. on that. But I've also seen videos like showing like effects of vape. Then it's also your whole lung black, what? No, then but people are getting like, admitted to hospital because their lung collapsed and shit. So I, is it really less bad? Yeah, I think because like there's so many different components. So like to a cigarette, right, there's that burning part, which I think to many people, I believe like vapes don't burn. So you don't get that carbon monoxide, I okay, think. Okay. But you still have like the nicotine, la, which is- And the tobacco. I don't know if there's tobacco. Actually. There is no tobacco, I believe. I Research that I've done, oh, I have yes. some uh, negative effects of uh, vaping. Uh, there was a recent SD article which just said all of these kind of things. Uh. Got positive so, effects. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Street cred on, on TikTok. Uh. <laughs> so the flavoring, which is not vetted by the health authorities here, can sometimes release cancer-causing agents such as formaldehyde and benazine, benazine when heated. Uh, according to the Health Hub website, once again, heavy metal particles such as tin, metal. lead, and nickel have been found in vapes and are believed to be a result of the heating mechanism. When inhaled, um, these can cause respiratory diseases. As in the part that needs to heat like the liquid or what? Yeah. So I'm wondering if people are wondering, are thinking that this is less harmful than c- cigarettes, right? Like, do they really know what they're like, getting themselves yeah, into? Yeah, what they're getting into. They probably mm. ignore that part. I'm actually quite confused because, right, how do nicotine patches work? It's you <laughs> stick it, no, no, you stick it into your body yeah. uh. and then it slowly releases nicotine into your body, correct? From what I understand, it is that kind of moderation thing like where it, yeah, it gives you a bit of, just enough to feel I don't need one okay. and then you just wean off like. yeah. how is yeah. that different from vape? because vape has other elements to it to give you like the flavour but the main component is nicotine as the substance to make you feel whatever you feel right? Mm. Yeah. so then isn't it in a, in a sense like a cessation too as well for smokers? but here's the flip side right? I mean from what I've seen is that people who vape they also like if given the opportunity, right? They will also smoke. People so they vape oh, and okay, smoke. Okay. <laughs> so instead of cessation too, it's become like gateway. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. So instead of actually, it's like say for example, in your office, you take a smoke break every two hours. So you're actually only smoking once every two hours. You still take that smoke break every two hours, but in between your you vaping. To, yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like there's there's two parts to it. So on one hand, the smokers that are saying I'm converting to the to the vape, right? They end up. <clears throat> like nicotine patches after I'm, I'm trying to cut down right. then eventually I'll stop using the patch but mm. vape it feels like they end up just continuing vaping and then the negative effects of that end up being what is harming their body right, la. Yeah, and then right. the second one is because of how I mean how it, it looks cool or it's like it tastes better it doesn't have that in uh that high activation energy that a cigarette might have right a lot of youths are picking it up also so mm. it's like it's like two folk 
Yeah, if, if you, that's what and it looks like. I, I think the other thing also is that like at least with smoking, not saying that smoking is good, like it's obviously bad, but mm. like with smoking, you have like what almost 40, 50 years worth of data since it's been around for so long. Mm. And when they discovered it was bad, right? But I think with like vapes, it's like you only have like maybe at most seven, eight years of data. Yeah. So you actually don't know how it affects the body long term yet. Right? I'm just very curious because like nicotine, right? The feeling of nicotine, like after you smoke cigarettes for a while, right? There's no feeling already. You're just doing it out of habit. Mm. And I'm pretty sure for vape, it's the same thing. So after a while, you are not vaping because of the feeling it gives you the kick. Like, you know, okay, sometimes maybe right, if you haven't smoked for a while, then you light up that one stick in the morning, that kind of the first stick, uh, then maybe you get that kick. Right. But for, for vaping, is, I think it's the same as cigarettes. Like maybe that first hit, you get a little bit of feeling. But after you continuously keep doing it and doing it and doing it, right, there's no real effect for a human being. The effect that comes, right, is very like placebo-ish right. where mm. you feeling like you're taking this deep breath and yeah. and then whatever is somehow supposedly relaxes you. Yeah. But it might I be the opposite. Know. Like, because that's what addiction is, ma. Mm. Is that they pick it up, it become a habit already and then they find themselves unable to stop. So it's instead of t- doing it to feel the kick, they have to do it in order to not feel the withdrawal. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's the, the other yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It could be that also, or like I, I think there's always a debate of like whether are you addicted to the smoking or are you addicted to the act of it. Yeah. Because sometimes it's, it's like John says, it's like really just that that inhaling and then the deep breath. Then you just yeah. do all like just take a straw. Like <laughs> yeah. No, so funny. I used to have this theory right where uh, there was a period of time where I was looking into like meditation and breathing exercise and I was oh, shit right. Wow. And then there was this. You totally don't you're like such a story. Person. There was this one exercise or, or a common practice is that every like. 45 minutes or whatever, right? You should give yourself a five minute break. Go out, then do like a short breathing exercise which is to slow inhale, exhale, count with counting, right? Then I thought about it. Don't smokers do that? (laughs) (laughs) And so I'm wondering if the relaxation or the stress relief that smokers get, right, is really from them actually just doing a breathing breathing. exercise. They could do it without the cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. And then if they just breathe, (laughs) but that's kind of like just put them into that. That whole schedule, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Nicotine, <laughs> oxygen. <laughs> eh, yeah. I think we also can't ignore the fact Ag- that- Ignore? Yeah, Ag- how do you spell that word? Hey, you act. Ag- yeah, I don't think, like, vaping's illegal, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's no. a pretty big part that people are Wait, like- Wait, tell me the punishment. Like, yeah, okay, uh, going back to that. <laughs> let me just tell you, uh, research once again, is that- Do you think you're addicted to this- <laughs> you, you have only worn this top in every I'm appearance. To a uniform. <laughs> okay. You should get fined for this. Like it's not right, but it, it looks on camera. It looks smelly. You know what I mean? He don't know how to respond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it looks overworn. Okay, Ooh. continue. Okay. Just now when we call you alcoholic, are you okay? Yes, yeah. Don't 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 don't, don't shit on the green jackets. Yeah. yeah. You probably already have. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Tobacco <laughs> Control and Advertisement and Sale Act, wow. uh, oh. is an offence to possess, purchase, or use e-vaporizers and their related components. The penalty for a fine is $2,000. Wow. Okay. And any person who is convicted of selling, possessing for sale, importing, or distributing e-vaporizers mm. is liable to a fine of up to $10,000 or Ooh. imprisonment. Or Ooh. both. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. For their first offense. Yeah. For the first offense. Yeah, the second or subsequent offense is liable to a fine of twenty thousand dollars. If it's illegal, I just don't know why so many people are just taking the risk. Huh? Yeah, taking that risk. Huh? You should do back checks, full back checks for every f-ing student every day. <laughs> every day. We did do it for a month. Poly, uni, secondary school, primary school. You do it. Uh, you clear it the f- out. Now okay, they're all posting TikTok they in your in your school toilet, they're vaping eh. Yeah, it's damn brave already, damn daring. Now yeah. the cleaner goes inside the toilet, then it's like cherry. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's not the urea smell. No, anymore. you have to fake it. If you are in the cubicle, you have to be like <laughs> 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 Then you step out. <laughs> no, I also feel right, it's because the impression is that it doesn't really harm like I, I always like to um compare it to e-scooters. Because e-scooters came out right. Straight away ban. And it's like a hard ban, similar to vapes. But for some reason, right, the complaint rates of e-scooters, right, was like, it's always on the news. Like someone is complaining about, hey, this person used e-scooter, the sabooing and all. Right. But I don't see anyone just taking a photo of a vapor and saying, hey, sabo. Like everyone seems quite chill about it. Nobody's complaining about vapors because it doesn't really, uh, in some sense, affect or or make other people uncomfortable or disrupt, make make them like discomfort. 
Uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That the Karens don't seem activated by vapors. Yeah, because just like it's not like you if you light up a cigarette and smoke, it's smelly. Yeah, then you're uncomfortable. Chok, choky, choky, you know, whatever that may be. No, no, choke a Karen. No, no. no. <laughs> but, that's a, but that's the scary part, right? Like of all the things we've talked about, like how it can be harmful, how it's liable to a fine, and all, all that kind of stuff. I personally find it troubling that people are getting bolder, that people are that people as a much younger demographic is picking it up and yeah. they don't stop. Yeah. I even see people right so brazen, right, when they that they actually make like a, a crochet like 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 holder for their, huh? their devices and then they just wear it around their neck. Like a necklace. <laughs> yeah. That was ridiculous. It's so arrogant. Like what are you trying to do? Yeah, yeah. No, but how do you Sorry even know it's inside? The, it's literally shaped like the device. Could be a Hey, it could pen, be anything, yeah. right? I mean, like, I mean, like, what thing, else like? would they hang on their neck that is like, you know? A pen lah. Like, like if I need to ask seven, someone to sign something, I'm an insurance agent, you know? <laughs> a bit sus lah to me. A bit sus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a weirdo move. Yeah. yeah. But okay, to the fines, right? I feel like at the end of the day, there can be all these f***ing laws, you might still disregard them. And when it comes to substance abuse, it's, I think it's more internally as an individual, right? Are you okay? Why are you okay? Why are you consuming the substance? Question yourself and your habits. Mm. And if it's something that you don't like about yourself or you think you can change, then that's what you should work towards. It shouldn't be like because you're afraid to get caught then you don't do. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think the why is so important and it applies to like across the board. Yeah, and also addiction. this is, honestly, uh, if I never smoke and I never drink, uh, I think I can buy one car. Eh. You know what I mean? There's, there's so much money is spent. Yeah, I, I agree with like going down to the root problem because with addictions especially, right? People don't do it not knowing the, the risk. They know the risk. They've already heard it all before, all the cons, all the health problems. They do it in spite of that. And so you really just got to get down to the root of the issue. Like, like why do you actually do it and do mm. you really need yeah. to or not? And don't let society or peer pressure push you to think that I have to do this because this is the only way I can unwind. Mm. This is the only thing I can do to, yeah. to relieve my stress or to, uh, to escape. There are so many other things that you can be doing and putting that money to. Like if you want to travel, if you didn't go and go for all those like... <laughs> if I, honestly, right, last time, if I never drink, right, every month is like... Confirm like four figure. Ne? Oh shit. Because Singapore is so expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like every month you just throw money at alcohol, right? Every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, drink, 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 like one dog, right? Yeah. Then you have to pay for the caps, the late night caps. They go to club, need to pay all the other thing, all like, wow, worth it, man. I regret, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you expect it on something else though? I would have had the money to, maybe if I wanted a car, or maybe if I wanted to yeah. travel or that, right? Wow. Yeah. Do, do you all think that the younger generation is a lot more woke and self-aware to the point that they can see when something is being subliminally marketed towards them. Because no. like cigarettes was a huge <laughs> thing, right? Mm. That they use the media industry celebrity and all that to, to market and make it look like cool. Like the act of taking this, putting it here and then, you know, that right. kind of thing in the, in the, right. the silhouette or that, right? Yeah. Why is that cool? It's because it was framed that way mm. and, and we were manipulated to believe that. But it's the same with cars and watches and whatever. We are like, with, with so much yeah. lah. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Like how Lux is actually targeted not towards the rich but towards... The pool. The, the, uh, the mm. people who want to look rich. Correct, mm. correct. So then, likewise, do you think that the younger generation is actually less susceptible to things like this? I think they have bigger problems which is the, am I cool? Like my cool friends are vaping, am I... Am, can no, I, no, which is I the same lah. Which is the same lah. But no, is so it they, that... They don't realise mm. that like... How to say like they're too focused on how they themselves look to other people than realizing that this is how it's being marketed. Mm. Right. So like almost if you look at the pros and cons list, right? Cons is that I might get caught. There is this health risk of me getting lung problems or whatever. But the pros is I get to look cool and fit in. And then they weigh it out and realize looking cool and fit in is better than all these different things. Class, so the answer is they are equally susceptible. <laughs> they, are, they are. I think every generation will have our own vices that we all cannot like control properly. Yeah. Mm. No, so one thing you could do is replace mm. the unhealthy <laughs> habit with a healthy habit. Like sex? Or? So like, I think previously, no, there was a period of time where because of the drinking situation, right? Mm. What I did was that I asked my one of my other drinking friends also, let's, instead of we go to the bar, we go to the gym. Oh! Then we just suck out that time spent. So now you're addicted to working out. Not he goes thing, three yeah. times a, a day. 
Like when he first started getting when he first started getting into his fitness journey. No, but that's a different story for a different episode. <laughs> <laughs> a different addiction. Yeah. But aren't there nicotine free vapes? No. Uh, in Australia. Oh. Yo. Is that a business? It's a business. Still illegal. Uh, yeah, but it's it's still illegal. Yeah. No, if even if I created a, a device where you just suck and blow out smoke. But there's no nicotine or any. No, other but the harmful part of it. Do you not listen to the Straits Times yeah. article? No, no, no. Yeah, if I can remove some of those layers, at least right, it completely negates that. It's how like there's alcohol free beer. Yeah, but it's Does a bit difficult. Ever work alcohol free beer? So Do you know I've seen several like YouTube videos already where they've tried it and it actually completely replaced it. In fact, right, those people can still feel the same satisfaction and get a little bit buzzed right from alcohol free beer. Mm. It's a psychological so thing. Yeah. Placebo already. Yeah, huh? and it's way healthier. Yeah. Hmm. It's kind of crazy. Once again, a big thank you to the Health Promotion Board. Thank you. We hope that today's conversation has provided some useful information and given you some motivation to kick your bad habits. If you need more information on vaping-related matters or require support, visit novaping.gov.sg, which can also be found in our description box below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs> Sorry, what the hell is going on? <laughs> the producer just indicated then your nip slip. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah. My addiction. So if you want to watch the rest of this episode, uh, you can subscribe on our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get his attention discreetly while Jared is talking and the camera is not here, right? But then when he look at it, right, then he's totally like... <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be discreet. I thought it's like maybe move left because that's usually the direction where it's like, oh shit, my nip slip. <laughs>